briefly summarize. Okay. Uh, when we last left our heroes in the in in the in the ancient before times, not that ancient before times, but you know, in in the month ago that since the last time we had um, non injurious play, uh, the group was somewhat split up. Joe had come to a couple of shocking revelations about his background and history connected to an ancient temple possibly out in the Congo region of the the Congolese region of Africa that was apparently connected to this uh, so, yeah similar type of temple that was here in Costa Rica um, shepherded or guarded or whatever by this construct i guess the stone construct golem person different different than um i would say different than nega how should i put this in my mind and and uh uh james feel free to contradict me on this uh but in my mind nega is more of a naturally occurring sort of earth elemental person sort of a member of a species whereas this temple guardian is while on the face of it like in in broad descriptions like it's a stone golem you go oh, okay that's kind of the same thing as nega um to my mind these Guardians were built by your people as a constructed being. So where you've got Nega, who's sort of a an ally species, so to speak, um, you've got you know whatever the your people's equivalent of almost like a servant robot would be, but but stone. That that's my thing but but again feel free okay oh that is interesting to me because I didn't realize that there was older tech than before your people. Like, sort of reverse engineer stuff. Ten thousand years. I am what I am fascinated by. Yeah, I mean, I, it's uh, fascinating to me that, like, to anybody in this setting, you are the ancient tech. Like, you you are the representative of the people with the ancient tech, and your people at their height were messing around with what they would consider to be ancient tech, which, in a lot of cases, yeah. Uh, which in the in the case in a lot of cases, what you know, somebody today would be looking at going, oh, this is some of Kiln's ancient, you know, people's ancient tech, and they're like, no, that 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 stuff was old when we got to it, um, and nobody's really realized that. Certainly not this guy. Um, that's cool. That's really interesting. So they're actually almost a precursor, although they refer to you as, how did she refer to you as one of the ancients? Um, but they were. So probably not super informative or forthcoming about whatever came before you guys either. So that is, that's no, that's no, that, yeah, or right, that's fair. That is really interesting. I like that. Okay. But in any case, she is different than Nega. Like th that part's true or, or, or relatively accurate. Okay. So, 
So, uh, uh, as I said, she had brought you all to this temple um, and given her apparent connection to a, at some level, some sort of temple-wide network. Um, she had known what had happened to Joe, at least at some level, or that something had happened to Joe. She knew that Joe had, at, you know, in some way, shape, or form, accessed the older temple, all that kind of good stuff, and gave him gave give him quite a few, I guess, shocks to the system in in talking about like what had happened and what her assumptions about that were and all that kind of thing. Um, Joe, somewhat shook at these revelations, took off from the temple to have some alone time. Uh, Alex shortly pursued, um, leaving Matt and, uh, Roddy and Kiln with Tia? No, Tahi. I kept I, I keep swapping the vowels. Tahi. Which is an indication I didn't make the name up. I got it from language and as a result can't keep seem to get it to stick in my head. Um Left with Tahi, you know, while they were doing, you know, some sort of uh uh kind of debriefing of her to get some more information because apparently uh, somewhat to her surprise, Roddy seems quite adamant about uh, uh, moving, you know, moving on to, you know, figure out what's going on with Joe and help him fix it. Meanwhile, Alex taking off to uh, sort of make sure Joe's okay. Um, which we left with um, the robot arm, the drone dropping the robot arm in front of Joe and and the quip from the shadows as we had been sort of panning around and following Joe. We thought like with some predator POV, um, then the drone drops the arm in front of uh, Joe and Alex quips, need a hand? Um, oh, can I give you a hand? Uh so I'm I'm, I'm gonna I'll, we'll put it this way. This is that th this conversation happened on forum. We're not going to worry about that. But if you were going to tell it back later, how would Joe dis sort of summarize that conversation? At right. Yes. Right. In as much as they may or may not be actually paying attention to it, because there's all, I mean, I think it was pretty clear Matt was definitely tuned into it. Whether or not Roddy and uh, uh, Kiln were depends somewhat on how much they were paying attention to that versus um, Tahi and that exchange, because Kiln was a little bit annoyed with Tahi for acting like she was towards Roddy, and Roddy was sort of poking the bear with a stick kind of kind of thing. So I, I'll I'll circle back to you guys to see how much you guys were, which thing you were most paying attention to. Um, because I like the contrast of it, um, how would Joe, like elevator summarize the conversation versus how would Alex summarize the conversation? Maybe they're the same, but I'm, I'm curious to see if they're not. So... Joe, how would you summarize that that whole talk that you two had? Alex gave a really shitty pep talk. That's awesome. I love that as a summary, incidentally. Alex, how how would is that how does that compare to how Alex would tell it later?
Um, I love that. Uh, I love, I love every, every, every part of that. Um, don't trust Intel from the temple. That's pretty good. <laughs> Singular Intel. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, it's more, da more data points are important. Um, lines of communication were open um, in order of probably closeness to this speaker and being able to listen in on this. Matt, what were you doing with regards to this? Like, uh, uh, were you like, what was, what's your reaction? What's your take on it? Were you doing anything uh, with the, the Cause you're a monster, except you're not. You're just a dude. She, it's a furry thing, man. You, she might be into that. No? Too soon? Uh, I gotta go back and I gotta get the second episode, a second season of Umbrella Academy. Anyway, so uh, Matt, so there's a lot to process there. It sounds like. What are you doing with all of that? Or what's what's what do we see in, in the Met panels, like the facial expressions in reaction to these conversations? Things things went bad, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Other thing. Yeah. And it's, I think some of what had happened in the, in your past with regards to this, this whole, uh, uh, consciousness transfer thing was frequently against the will. Um, in some cases, the consciousness being destroyed in the tran like the, the sort of victim, uh, the consciousness was being destroyed in the transfer. That doesn't seem to map to this. So it's, it's ethically used technology that in your, experience in your his i should experience in your historical knowledge of this was a never ethically used so that is a i say a frustrating wrinkle because it's you know it's it's sure which is a problem yeah even though the the tech is certainly a problem or could be um I find the tech repulsive, but not Joe. Um, so that's. Uh, <laughs> uh, 
Uh, oh, wow. Well, that's a lot to unpack that I'm not going to touch with a 10-foot pole instead. Um, so right now, we're playing a really annoying... With, with the other three, with Kiln and Tahi and, and Roddy, we're paying, playing sort of an annoying game of, of telephone slash, you know... One person giving you the one person giving one of the other people the silent treatment, um, kind of thing because apparently being ten thousand plus years old doesn't make you not act like a, you know, grumpy tween, um, when you're out of sorts or maybe you know that's just an unavoidable situation, um, but. Yeah, anything that Roddy is asking, uh, uh, Tahi is like turning and like responding to Kiln and giving that information or or even trying to couch it in terms of natural conversation so that it isn't a, it doesn't you can pretend it's not a direct response to whatever it is that Roddy uh, just said, um, which you know, already kind of established is a, somewhat annoying to Kiln. Um, I don't know how Roddy, how are you taking this kind of behavior toward you? Uh, <laughs> aggressive, aggressively, just being more and more kind of like, <laughs> oh, okay. All right, cool. Go, cool, cool, cool. So, certainly the Temple Guardian is not being great, but honestly, neither of the people participating in this conversation besides you, Kiln, are really covering themselves in, in glory when it comes to uh, uh, good manners. How, what's your, what's your take on all this? What's your response to all this? How are you dealing with all of this because uh tai is getting more and more agitated as as time goes on with with all of this like you know something that roddy did or said how he approached the whole joe situation kind of upset her she was already kind of upset um she seems to have not taken the news of she's become more upset since you kind of like said, you know, I'm sort of the only one and, and process that information or became, she became more, more tense. Um, Roddy having discovered the buttons are in the area has decided to push all of them by rolling, like face rolling back and forth across them. Um, so I mean, uh, so there's, there's a lot. Yeah. Nobody's being, how are you what are you doing what do you do what are you doing aggressive aggressive Okay, leader. Yeah, I, right. I remember that. Yeah, okay. Um, okay. Um, so, Roddy, with your aggressive, aggressive situation, um, Are you aiming for anything other than to just to get a rise out of her? Or is it is it as simple as that? Are you looking to kind of prove a point, get her to say or do something? Um, she came at you pretty high and mighty about the whole, like, why are you even here? What are you even doing thing? Are you are you trying to prove are, are you trying to get her to like. Be. Like lose her, lose her cool. So you know you can kind of go like nobody's any better than you. Or is it? Is this just kind of, you know? Well, you were shitty to me, so I'm going to be shitty to you back. Or, 
Or is there is there maybe a bit of a goal there? I don't know. Interesting. Interesting. Okay. All right. That says a lot um, that we haven't had a chance. It doesn't have a, it doesn't, uh, there's, there's a lot to pa unpack there. Yeah, there there really is. And we haven't had a chance to do a lot of that unpacking. So Roddy is definitely kind of spoiling it for a fight. Doesn't even quite summarize. It just wants things to get like they've gotten ugly. So let's get them uglier until everybody's embarrassed of themselves. Um, how about we have a provoke on that now kiln i want like you to recall that um you have the capability um with team to kind of make this more difficult by sort of running interference and that kind of thing uh there's there's ways to not help um anti-help uh using using team which we have a pile of so if this is not you know if you if you're Trying to be a little bit of a peacemaker here, that that's an option as well. But yeah, let's see. Let's see how much of a how hot under the collar, so to speak. Um, how many buttons do you actually push with your face rolling? I think that's superior. <laughs> no problem. What's that? Okay. Good to know. Oh, that's right. After the fact, as you say. Oh, that's right. You've got a little uh, thing in your pocket there. <laughs> okay. Uh, is that, is, are you just using the regular spend team selfishly thing or is that part of your, your, your character? You got a thing on your character for it too. Oh, yeah, yeah. When you use team selfishly, clear condition or mark potential. The first time in your session that you use team to... Oh, interesting. The first time in the session that you use team to help a teammate, take plus one forward. Interesting. So you get kind of both sides of the coin on that. That's super interesting. Okay. Um, using team selfishly. Uh, so that's a nine. You're pushing for a... What does that do? Um, where is that? Gotcha. So when you uh, where? to get you up to a 10. Yeah. OK, so. Yes. Moment. OK, so. I, oh, for some reason, I'm, oh, there it is. Duh. One team for the pool, shift one. Okay, yeah. I, I couldn't find it on the sheet. I knew what you were saying seemed exactly right, and I just I couldn't find it on the sheet. Um, so that would get you up to a 10. Um, Kiln, are you uh, trying to soften the blow on this at all, or is this kind of a duck and cover situation, or uh, what are you... What are you doing as, as Roddy's like clearly trying to get Tahi to do something inadvisable? <laughs> okay. Tag team. Um
Okay. Um, all right. So that would get up to a 10. This is a provoke. So on a 10 with a provoke, um, they rise to the bait and do what you want. So you're looking for them, to, for Tahi to do um, something like basically, as you say, take a swing at you. Okay. Um, she clearly, like all the, I think, really it's the stupid pile of rocks thing that she like just finally her eyes kind of stupid rockley stupid rockley um okay the stupid rock lady thing the eyes kind of get hard they also get kind of bright um they shift from that gold that we see in the picture to to a blue that matches the lines that we've seen in the uh, in, in the in the wall um Uh, Joe and Alex, remind me, when you guys were wrapping up that conversation, were you guys, was it all like, you know, link arms and head back to the rest of the group? Or were you still kind of sitting and and, and, and pondering the meaning of the world while gazing at either the naval end or your sunset or your naval? End? Okay. Yes, yes. And, that, you know, there's, there's certainly like the, I'll, I'll, a number of your conversations uh, or, or a number of the sort of the panning shots of your conversation are like from weird distant, slightly distant angles, like out in the trees and stuff like that to give the sense that there's other people watching kind of thing. Um, that was, it was constantly, that was constantly there. Um So, okay. Where Tahi's at now, as I said, this was sort of like that room in the, you know, a, kind of a big open room in the mummy uh, kind of thing, except without the treasure stuff. So you've got, uh, you know, sort of a big central kind of open area, a bit of a dais sort of conversation area there. Um, uh, sure, it could be a conversation. <laughs> um uh, in any case, if, if it were a speaking auditorium, you'd be down on the the auditorium portion of it. Um, but there's pillars around and that sort of thing. And where Ty is standing, like when her eyes go blue, you you get um, uh, that sort of like power energy signal signature in the walls kind of thing where she's at, like on the floor where she's standing crawling up the pillars where she's at um and kiln you can't help but remember that like uh uh some truisms from your age which was basically like you know respect the temple or the temple will teach you respect kind of things that were meant to be somewhat ominous because the temple guardians were basically not to be messed with. Um, not least because although they were entirely in alignment with your society's, you know, culture and they were central parts of your society's culture, they were not of your society. And people didn't all didn't really ever forget that, that they weren't ever fully understood because they came from before. Um, so the, there was always that respect with a, a, a not inconsequential tablespoon of fear um, or unsurety, at least with them. Um, so there's a little bit of that going in there. And Roddy just kind of smirking like, oh, yeah, this is going to be good. Um, which I don't know, may or may not strike you certainly may strike the comic book viewer as the the smug look of somebody who's getting exactly as the exactly what they want while standing in the oncoming lights on a railroad track um they may be getting what they want but they don't fully understand what it is that they're getting maybe um and with 
Alex and uh, uh, Joe kind of sort of heading back, we're seeing them kind of move through the trees and coming upon really what should be that moment where they come around, uh, you know, into an opening and are confronted by the thing that's been stalking them. Um, the lights building up uh, on the walls and so forth. But then it kind of, it seems to die down right around Tahi because she's, she's forcing herself to like focus down and the light almost kind of goes away a little bit uh, right around her as she seems to sort of like draw into herself and she starts to stride forward with one arm coming back as she's striding sort of straight at um, Roddy. Um, the hand brought up for a mighty, a mighty, you know, smiting of, of some kind or another, whether or not, uh, Kiln's actually doing about that. The interesting thing, Matt, is that while the light died down around Tahi, there's a, 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 a long, one of the walls, the, the light is actually growing. So right where Matt's at, or not met where 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 Tahi's at, it, it had kind of like drawn back into her and become somewhat normal. Light actually a little bit thing, but the light the 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 light signal is brightening actually off to the side to the point where that's actually become uh, uh, the strongest light source in the room. Um, except it's not following the the sort of carvings on the wall. Uh, it's the lights actually coming from the cracks between the stones. Um, Alex, you and Joe kind of come around and I don't know if there's a meta level to this where Alex is sort of out of, of just horror movie, you know, self-awareness sort of expecting something to jump you guys now that the tension is dropped in the conversation or whatever but there's a bit of you that's expecting something as you come around here um it it both is and isn't what you were expecting because you come around and there is a ring the first thought in your head just completely on in congress whether i think probably to your background and stuff is toadstool ring uh, um, it's not, it's a ring of your drones that apparently offlined without any network signal, like any network blip. They're just dead in the grass in a ring about 30 yards, like kind of circling around in this, or around this clearing area. They're not, it's not a perfect circle, but all the ones that were sort of active in this area dropped and they all kind of dropped within like a radius of about call it. Yeah. 15 yards all the way around. Um, yes. That no, um, whether or not there was, you would, you would, I mean, you're, if you were looking at, it, you'd go, okay, so there was an EMP right about there. Um, except it was an EMP that didn't, give any indication that these guys had all gone offline but the the central effect would have been there um you can assess the situation to see if there's any sign of anything there's nothing there right now um okay sounds good joe there's a whole bunch of dead drones there um met the light is building up Kiln is watching. I, I I'm having I'm not sure what what Kiln's approach here is, but it seems to be a little bit like I kind of want Roddy to get smacked, but I don't want him to get smacked too much. So whatever body language you want to ascribe to them, as as Kiln is watching that, where it's like, you know, I'm gonna let the fight on the playground start, but then I'm gonna be ready to break it up once you know everybody's noses are properly bloodied. Um, Tahi's heading at Roddy. Roddy, of course, has this, you know, I'm going to get what I want. Smirk on his face. 
none of them are really paying attention to this growing light on the side of the chamber. Uh, it is not like when Kiln activated the temple. It is not like when Tahi activated um, any of the stuff around here. It's not following the carvings that you sort of automatically think of as the circuitry of this stonework or anything like that. It's coming from between. It's coming from outside. It is coming in and it is bad. What do you do? So basically what I'm saying is there's a big glow. It's not, yeah, okay. I, I just want to make sure I'm explaining it well because I, I don't know if I, I have a very clear picture in my head, but uh, Google image search fails me right now for what I'm thinking of. That's fair. <laughs> no problem. I am trying to find a blank sheet here somewhere that I can scribble stuff on. Uh, it's, it's definitely, uh, I'm going to, I won't, I won't be coy about this. This is the same energy that the, the light you identify the light. Well, actually, where's that sodding picture that I used before? Hang on. Uh, <laughs> Dave, uh-oh. Uh, oh, maybe I can't. Maybe I don't have it immediately to hand. Man, if I had a dollar for everything, for every time I can't find the thing that I swear I'd saved. It doesn't really matter. Um, it's the undead moose energy signature of the big blast. The thing where it was like blasting swaths out of the trees for a quarter mile that thing Whoa. yeah i can't find that 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 mecha chest blast thing that i was using before um uh, i'm gonna chalk that up to saving it in a place that did not save which is possible <laughs> okay. I I I like that. I like it. Um Oh, thank you. Oh, Discord, of course. Thank you. Yeah. No, it's I just need to save it back to where it was so I have it again. I would have sworn I went down through. Oh, I know what I did. I, I was, yeah, different computer. Never mind. It doesn't matter. Um, I'm just going to save that into my resources so I have it for later. Because, you know. Now. 
I know I know what you said was superior. You were you were sort of calling. Oh, that's actually a really good picture for kind of what I'm thinking of, Dave. So thank you for the cracks in the wall thing. That's that is pretty OK uh, for kind of what I was thinking of. You know, but basically the idea of the of the like light, light leaking through the mer the masonry just before, you know, everything goes to hell in a handbasket, um, which definitely works for me. Um, good stuff there. Yeah, definitely. Um, OK, so. And and given the snap of your voice and that kind of thing, I get the superior thing, but. For my money, I think what you're kind of doing is defending them. So, I mean, like, give it up, stop this kind of thing. Oh, you get to roll superior? Does it, Do you get to roll superior for protecting, for defending people? Oh. <laughs> Um, so I guess though, my, I mean, it's a similar role, which is good. Um, I guess the question then is more about what you want to, and I, you know, I'll leave this up to the player, to the, to the PCs basically, but to a certain extent, Tahi is the one that you want to maybe make this land on. So is the question about making sure that they're ready when this happens, um, kind of deal or is it more about stopping their nonsense? Where, where where does the real meat of that happen? Is it is it more about you snapping them out of it in order to protect them, or is it more about you snapping them out of it to you know pull their head directly out of their ass because they're being idiots? What do you, which, which do you think? Cause it, it, I mean, that's more about like afterwards us, um, you know, knowing which move to read from, you know, kind of a deal. What do you think? I'm fine with either. I'm, I'm fine with either one. I just want to know which move to read. Right. Okay. Sounds good. Uh, I'm going to spend it mostly about, you know, kind of focus a little mostly about what's going on with, um, with Tahi, just because I think it's probably, I don't know, I just like that a little bit, so... Okay, and I will move, well, whoa, nope, undo that. I've been doing stuff over on another screen, so let me just freehand this, and we'll get this. All right, beautiful. And we will grab all y'all and move you hither. So the rectangular box with the squiggles in it is where the hot mess is taking place with Kiln and Roddy and Tahi. M is met. The pink blast is coming through the wall and the jiggy jaggy lines up at the top are the steps. All clear? Ish? Does that make sense? I mean, in as much as in, in, in as much as I can't, you know, draw these things worth a, worth a dang. Um, that's my rough sketch of the, the thing. So um there you go. And let's have that provoke and see where we land. Drone ring is alternate fey mushroom circle. I like it. I don't think so.
Mm. <laughs> Ooh. I mean, it's it's really uh, it's really all about the punching. Um okay. So with the provoke on a 12, uh, for the NPCs, they rise to the bait and do what you want. For the PCs, um, basically, if they do what you say, they add, you know, you, you get to, if they do what they, if, if they do what you say the PCs do, you get to add team to the pool. Um, if they don't do it, then they get to mark, then they mark a condition. Um, so free will for them, but for Tahi, at least, um, your your harsh words plus the blast that comes searing through the wall um, seems to bring her back to, if not her senses, at least her immediate like awareness of a far greater threat than an annoying city boy um, with with family issues. Um, yeah. So okay. Back to this. Um, so yeah, the blast comes through, um, basically straight through from the, you know, through the wall and again with the sound, the blah, and straight across the room through the wall on the far side and straight between you two. I mean, uh, uh, Roddy, you probably roll a bit out of the way because it is a little bit close to where you guys were at. Um, if you wanted to be paranoid about it, say that it was maybe awfully close to Tahi. Um, Tahi sort of leaps backwards without rolling or anything like that. Just sort of does almost like a wusha kind of jump backwards, which given what she's made out of, she shouldn't really be able to do. Um, and Kiln, you're not directly in the line of fire. So for you, it's more of like a, yeah, that's, that's pretty good. Blah. Yeah, lovely. Um, right. Joe and Alex, but Joe initially. Um, you guys hear the sound. You both hear the sound out there. And it's not where you are. Um which subconsciously or not, you may have, you, you may have subconsciously been almost expecting that um, Joe, the mood you were in, you might've been wanting that um, you have instead come to the realization that that's happening back the way you came and you have trundled off to beat your breast and feel bad. And in the meantime, your friends have been exposed to the danger that you were probably hoping to run into yourself. Um, so the moose, or, or if you want to put it a slightly different way, the moose is blasting at Met and you're nowhere near there. What do you do? <laughs> the comics code is shocked. Um, Yes, cool. Alex, um, right when you, well, actually, no, that's not accurate. Uh, call it, I'm not going to do the math right, but assume that this is what I'm going with is the difference between the speed of light and the speed of sound. About three seconds before you hear the blah, the moose shows back up to the drones that you have in that area. So your network of viewing that you have kind of the, the you know, the, the netting of, of drones that you have kind of over the, over this whole kind of region at this point, um, 
you know, the moose had gone to ground, the moose had gone dormant, the moose had gone down in a hole, who the hell knows? Um, you're on a search pattern. The thing is just suddenly back on grid and you see it and you see where it is. And about the same time that you're going, oh, shit, that's when you hear the, the like the sound reaches you because it goes back on. It didn't become visible. It. Something started showing up again. Stopped cloaking decloaked like a Romulan who the hell knows but uh, uh, when it did the thing you could see it again apparently it has a stealth mode um, so what do you do cool um, can your drones do anything can you do anything from here while you are running I ask because I honestly don't know <laughs> I, I am i wouldn't think that you would be saying it if you weren't serious do you i mean you can always make this action like obviously make the ask you are a soldier is this i was gonna say that that was that was the bigger question is you have a move for it so what is the move out of curiosity thank you do, 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 do. Oh, I love I love the thing where you can just click on the move and it pops in there. When you ask Aegis for additional resources, equipment, information, roll soldier. On a hit, they'll resupply you as best they can. On a 10 plus, the resources are highly classified or experimental. Take plus one ongoing to deploying them throughout the mission. On a miss, Aegis sends what they think you need, regardless of what you actually requested. I mean, this may be my favorite move of all time, but... Uh, at least it is right. It, it is. It is a favorite move. Um, okay, yeah. Why don't you, uh, while you are pelting back towards the temple, uh, uh, Alex, why don't you roll? Full hit. Okay. They, on a hit, they resupply you as best they can. Okay. All right. What was the what was the Hulkbuster called? Veronica or Betty? One, Veronica, Veronica. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah, it's good. Um, I mean, probably not that because I mean, how can you be prepared that prepared for an undead moose situation? Um, but still, interesting stuff. Okay, so you call in something for ages and are running and joe is leaping and met has spread things out a bit and gotten her provoke in and gotten verbally i am moose verbally slapped some sense into people and roddy you wanted to punch a moose so the fun thing about this is at this point is i we have i am moose right here Oh, can I grab this thing? I'm in the wrong layer. Hang on. Oh, I see. Oh, that's much brighter. I was on a different layer, so everything looked kind of faded out. The 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 there, there, this thing is not right outside the wall, and even like the bright light kind of came through at an angle. Like if it, oh, let me draw another little thing here real quick. Uh, blah, 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 blah. draw a polygon line. So if this were a side view of the room that you're in the blast oh oh nope the blast came kind of through like that from right to left because it's not quite that high but um that's that's probably overdoing it somewhat but this thing is basically put another way this thing was up at ground level and blasted through where you were and is now coming down through the tunnel that it just created um so it's it's kind of up a slope a bit in a in a cooling tunnel uh that it blasted from up from up at the surface um it's probably i don't know 10 
10 yards up, up, up this thing and, and coming down through it. It's coming down at a pretty good pace. It's not galloping or anything like that, but it's not, it's, it's moving with aggression, but not like running necessarily. Um, what do you do? It doesn't provide a lot of dodging space, but you know, that neither here nor there. You are Roddy. What is that? What do we do? Oh, yes. Excellent, excellent idea. <laughs> of course. <laughs> okay um this seems like a directly engaged to me um okay okay do that you want to bullfight this thing okay all right it's still, I mean, it's still definitely directly engaged. I think you might want to get it out of the tunnel because that's a bad place to be when it basically made a tunnel about its size using a weapon that they can make another more tunnel with. Um, so you might want to get it out into the space somehow. Um, so yeah, whipping something at it, anything like that to kind of get your, you, know, you got to get it mad. You need that red, you need that, the equivalent of the red cape, right? You think so? I sure, sure. With I mean, I I, I am I am down with that. Although if we're going to roll it into like a whole a whole thing, the whole thing is is a directly engaged. It's just a question of. Um, Okay, so your deal is like let's let me see if I can get this thing out where we can actually, you know, where I can actually get this thing going. That I can definitely see as a provoke. Um, so whipping stuff at, dodging back and forth across the mouth, of this thing, getting it to, you know, charge. Gotcha. All right. In that case, yeah. I got, I have one trick. I do it very well. All right. Uh, all right. Let's let's have that provoke. Let's see how that goes. Are you shouting? Are you throwing? Are you? Okay. So you want to get it out? So you want it you want it back outside or or down in the down in the temple? Okay. All right. Cool, cool, cool. All right. So the, yeah, this tri tricky obviously some physical danger here. So yeah, let's have the provoke and see how this is how this is going to go. Do, 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 do. Whew, you guys and your dice. Holy moly. All right. Uh, so, yeah. Um, I'm going to get this thing out in the open. You guys do something. I don't know if he's shouting any of that kind of stuff. But he's he, basically Roddy like leaps up, does kind of a, 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 a parkour kind of parkour kind of pull up and roll into the tunnel thing and just disappears up into this thing. Um <laughs> I mean, the mighty bullfighter. Oh, I like the little the fact that <sighs> no one bullying. That's a 
that's good stuff right there is what that is. All right, so, uh, yeah, Roddy, your timing on this has to be perfect, but luckily your timing on most things are perfect. Um, the, the horns are starting to glow, and you pretty much imagine you'd be like a fly on a windshield if this thing actually fired off in the tunnel. So knowing what the level of intensity of light is on this thing is usually at when this sucker fire, fires off. You figure you've got about a split second there where you can plant your foot right in the middle of its forehead basically and vault over it. Um, do you like whack it as you go by just for the sake of enraging the thing, like smacking it on its side or anything like that? Or, or, <laughs> it's usually enough. Um, kiln with this is not your people's tech. This is the, this is the, this is a creation of the enemy. What's that like? Is it biomechanical? Is it only looking alive, but is actually a machine underneath and, and you know largely disguised? Is it a is it a living thing that or a once living thing that's been sort of reanimated through some fell technology slash sorcery? Like what is when when the enemy? If it's uh what what is the yeah what well just like what is uh, to a certain extent you're answering about this thing but to a larger extent like what is the thematic thing that ties together not necessarily the allies and servants of the enemy but the things that it makes to be to 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 harry those who would stand against it in you know in, in deadly fashion. Because it is a, it says absolutely a construct. It's not a, it's not a species necessarily. Anyway. Gotcha. great and an awe-inspiring megafauna of, of a bygone age that this thing is some kind of chimera, Frankensteinian chimera of. Tinkered with, well, I mean, obviously it has, I mean, generally speaking, moose do not have power, do not have energy weapons. Tinkered with, <laughs> tinkered with in a mechanical sense in a in a, a sort of sorcerer biological sense a burglarious sense no no yeah i got you To it, yeah. Got it. yeah, yeah. Gotcha, gotcha. Uh, fun, fun fact. Um, studies of of the language of the time and uh, that sort of thing would seem to imply that Eyes of Newt was a mnemonic that helped people remember um, various plant ingredients that were supposed to go into the pot. So Eyes of Newt were like tiny, like fennel seeds or something like that. It was a reminder of like you need the small seeds that are like the size of what you would imagine a newt size would be, but not actual newt size, but like tiny seeds. 
Yeah. There you go. I want to say it's like maybe maybe millet or something. I can't remember what it was supposed to stand for. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, okay, so the reason I was asking is I wanted to get a, a, a give uh, Sink a sense of like what he's feeling as he's going over this thing. But uh, given that it's a largely living thing, it's not like you're feeling the worrying you know, hard metallic, you know, rust and, and leaking oil of some 10,000 year old contraption that's barely keeping itself going. And it's much more of like a, a you know, a, an unnaturally extended living thing. Um, no, if you, you can absolutely, this is your thing. So by all means, tell me everything about it that you want to. It wouldn't feel right anyway. You would just not. It, it's 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 the touch version of the uncanny valley. Okay, and I'll I'll throw in a few extra little bits like what probably Roddy you initially process is, it's fur, it's animal it's animal hair, but it's the animal hair of a mangy dog with fleas and worms. It's warm like a living thing, but it's it's or, or rather it it's it's not. It's not hot like a machine. It's hot like a feverish, like a feverish creature that's that's about to go into like convulsions and 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 some sort of seizure. So it's 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 hot to the touch in a way that a very unhealthy thing, living thing, is is hot to the touch. So it's it feels wrong that whole uncanny valley of the touch thing. But at the same time, it also feels like a living thing that is very, very sick. Um, it does not feel good to touch uh, as you're, as you're like vaulting over by hand and then, you know, planting one, one or vaulting over by foot and then planting one hand to kind of like continue past the thing. Um, it had already lit up its horns. It wants to turn. It turns and it's kind of hitting the side of the tunnel. So it lets off another blast, another bomb, but it's doing it as it turns to kind of like that whole thing where it's like, okay, it'll have to go all the way down to the end of the tunnel and turn around. Yeah, not so much. It's just going to make a much wider. So this, um, I need a polygon. How can I draw? I need a uh, draw a shape. No, draw a shape. So we go with this shape. Is that going to work? No, it's not the right shape I want, but whatever. I'll take it. Regular? Eh, doesn't matter. Anyway. Um, but yeah, this, the swoop starts at the tunnel. Um, I want to get this thing bigger than it is. And then kind of sweeps left as the thing is trying to turn and... and get itself around and basically burn itself some burn itself the ability to turn around and that sweeps back through the temple again and kind of again comes through this whole area here so there's a lot of diving and rolling um, um again not so much for met um met's on the right side of this room uh uh kiln and and, and Ty, but th this thing is like that beam is sweeping through there and blasting through uh, pillars, walls, um, down into whatever other chambers are, are are past this space and everything like this. Is this thing is like turning around and 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 tearing, like trying to get around and turn um, and get after Roddy. About halfway around, uh, it lets out kind of a like as the beam stops. And probably only after about 135 degrees of turn rather than the full 180 that it needs. And it's kind of got itself 
most of the way around it's having to force itself into sort of this bend to kind of get its butt back around so it can continue back up the time and it's like struggling and scraping and it lets out this bellow of just anger and frustration and rage and despite the destruction of her temple and this this thing that is she's probably spent the last the better part of a couple thousand years trying to keep from finding this place um kiln you hear tahi comment in response to this this bellow that is exactly how he makes me feel too she kind of mutters under her breath as the thing is kind of uh uh turning around um <laughs> it's like it's like two 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 powerful blows with one strike um Kellen, what do you do the tunnel access is much wider than it was when roddy went up in <laughs> that's fair sure very cool um all right well that's i mean essentially that's going to be a directly engaged now the good for you in this um not the noblest of hits because the thing is turned around to go after Rai. so you're basically coming up the tunnel straight at the back of this thing um so yeah you you kind of like just leap up into this thing and just go pummeling up in there and summon your weapon as you as you go kind of a deal so let's just uh let's go with a directly engage and see what and see what happens this thing has many defenses uh offenses it is a creature of destruction um so we'll see how this goes bloop i heard the bloop i am in the wrong not awfully that's true all right so we have a directly engage and you are charging up into the tunnel with this thing you're about like 10 feet away from this thing and you remember it's like oh you can't help but remember that that sort of area blast out thing that it does um and think oh this might have been a really fantastically bad idea um directly engage on a seven to nine pick one you can resist or avoid their blows take something from them create an opportunity for your allies or impress surprise or frighten the opposition what say you hmm okay are we are we thinking a literal actual thing or or something a little bit more symbolic like mobility or i don't know hope <laughs> I, <laughs> what has it got in its pockets um i've got a d100 table around here somewhere if we need that Yeah, it seems to be that seems to be originating the the blast the the forward blast in any case seems to be coming from the horn. Um, so so yeah yeah say we'll say antlers. Um, that is okay. Um, yeah, we we'll have some fun with that. All right, so. Yeah, so to get to that, because it is going away from you at this point in time, basically you're charging uh, up and, and, and sort of, are you sliding under the thing and coming up in front of it and slashing at it? Or are you flying, you like leaping over the thing and slashing it as you fly by? Are you jumping on its back and chopping? What's what's this look like as you're, as you're 
like chopping a horn off and and messing with this thing's basically you know i'm taking its ranged attacks um what what's what's that maneuver like in which way do you look cool <laughs> I mean, yeah, it really it's like where are you going to be standing when you get smote? Like I just I need to know that. That's it's key for placement purposes. So kind of jump up on its back and then and then like slash at the. It's it's really more about weight. <laughs> and just give it a chop. Okay. Um. So yeah, I mean this thing. Uh. There's not a lot. I mean, at the angle that you're at and where you're at and, every, and the strength that you're putting behind this thing, you're not. This is not a situation where you need to hit it twice. I mean, the 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 horn and it's only the one um, comes off like with just a solid chop. Very satisfying. The thing roars, and you have that moment of like yes, and then it 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 bucks. That there's no other word for it than. And, I, you know, thank you for the bullfighting imagery in my head for this. But, I mean, the thing basically bucks. You're on top of it. So is the roof. Um, so, basically, in very short order, what it bu does basically is just buck straight up, smash you into the ceiling. And as you tumble off towards the back of the thing, it kicks with both feet and knocks you all the way back into the temple where you skip several times before hitting the far wall. But the horn came off. So, souvenir? No. Uh, I mean, yes, but maybe not at the exact moment. Um, take a powerful... I, I'm leaving this up to you. Take a powerful blow or just take a condition? What 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 feels what feels on scope for you? Because the thing smashes you around, but maybe you bounce back from that. Alternately, this shit just hurts, and you know you take a condition. It's a little riskier with the take a powerful blow, obviously, but there's a there's a potential for good. Hard choices. I mean, yeah, I mean, take a, take a powerful blow. I mean, it seems like just this horrible, horrible. Yeah, I mean, there are actually very few results on take a powerful blow where you take conditions. Um, so, I mean, take a powerful blow is a great way to beat the shit out of the situation and the characters without actually, like, depleting hit points. I mean, honestly it's one of my favorite damage mechanics in any RPG because you can pound the living holy shit out of everybody forever practically. And you never have to worry about accidentally killing anybody. Um, cause there's always another option than you kill everybody. Um, so I kind of like it for that, but sometimes you just want to take a hit and have it be like, Oh, I got the shit beat out of me and now I'm pissed. Um, there's a simplicity and purity to that. I don't feel strongly enough about this. And if, 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 uh, Kiln wants the opportunity to possibly get, you know, smacked up against the far wall and then get back up, wipe some blood away from his nose and come go charging after the thing. Then that's well, you can narrate that either, in any case. So it's, I'm just kind of leaving the door open. I said he, I think, in there. So I, let me correct myself today. Sorry. It's all right. All right, so take take a powerful blow. Do you have any conditions right now? Well, that's a good situation for you. 
Let's let's uh, find out. That's good, though. That is a good roll. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, take a powerful blow. Uh, six or less, you stand strong. Uh, uh, mark potential is normal, so low roll. Mark potential. And say, so again, buck you up against the ceiling. Smash. Um, uh, you roll off the back. It punts you basically back down into the thing where you skip and roll. Um, but... What do we do? We see some of the legendary resilience of your people, or, or, or what? Like what? What's? What do you do? How do you weather this thing? I'm sorry. Stone skipping. I like that. Oh, that that whole anime, uh, like the, the the skidding backwards, like the three point skid backwards thing. Very nice. So a little bit of a skip, but then you catch yourself and 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 just uh, and get control of it. I can't see that gif. I don't know why. Anyway, it's weird. Um, <laughs> I posted up my my immediate mental take on it. You know, the shaking the dust off with the violent. You know, with, with the violent arm shake thing um all right so you skip back skid go charging boom uh moose kicks and then starts charging back up into the light of the forest um roddy are you at the opening as this thing is coming out and kind of duck out of the way as it comes out or or are you just are you further along like what where are, do we see you as this thing kind of breaks for daylight and kind of getting out of the way at the last second or, or what's the deal there? Okay. So yeah, Roddy dodges out of the way just as this thing charges out in the daylight. It looks like it was lighting up. It's like, as it coming up the tunnel, it looks like it was lighting up its horn, but it, it, it can't Roddy. What it reminds you of is, is when one bulb is out in a fluorescent uh, light bank, and you know the other bulb is fine, but it can't get the circuit going. So you've got like one bulb that's basically dead, except for like the glow at either end. And the other bulb that can't quite get up to proper luminosity just because it can't complete the circuit properly. Like sit, c city, yeah, c city, city kid analogy there is like with, with, with one horn gone, the thing just can't get the energy up to the point where it can do what it needs to do um, with the horn. Which, you know, cocky as you are, still kind of relief. Um, this thing's coming up. It seems to realize that it can't do what it would normally do. So it just lowers its head and starts charging. And you just simply uh, duck out of the way as it emerges into the light. Uh, and it, it, it charges out into kind of the open ruins uh, up at the top there uh, that we have certainly uh, referenced a number of times, but that is not going to stop me from pulling them out, uh, you know, one more time just for the sake of having them out here in the open. Um, they kind of charge out a lot of rough stones, uh, ruinous buildings, that kind of thing. Uh Trees, sunlight, chirping birds, and oh yeah, 
giant flying fucking gorilla about to land on this thing, Joe, what do you do? <laughs> Charges out. Rodney ducks out of the way, and it's practically like Roddy knew that it was he was leaving the thing for the for the for the gorilla to land on him. Um, maybe he did. Who knows? Uh, ooh, that would be interesting. Uh, I'll, okay, I I find that yeah. I like it's it's. There, there was. Uh, no, but we can do that. I did not put the team back in there. Roddy did not continue the fight. I don't think that was really necessarily up for debate. But nevertheless, the provoke was, the provoke was out there, and let the provoke. Where? One card to deal. Yeah, there we are. All right. <laughs> Get your sarcasm back in your pants and no. Uh, um Yeah. It there's times when you get grief from Roddy. But you know, there's times when you're definitely not gonna get grief from Roddy. And th and those times are you know to quote a book that my daughter and I are currently listening to right now, oh no, see when I'm doing the thing that you don't want me to do, you will know that I am doing the thing I want you to do. If you have to ask yourself whether I'm doing it right now, I'm not doing it right now. Anyway, so yeah. All right, so, Joe, I, th I believe this is probably a directly engage. So, yeah, flying gorilla to the moose as the moose kind of skids and turns and starts, you know, lining up on Roddy. <laughs> smash. Joe smash. Use the brightly colored math rocks. Well, you, you don't net, you don't need team until after you roll. Yeah. You now need team. Wow! Holy moly! All right. So that's a six. Um, okay. So you come flying out of there. Um, the Moose is glowing. Not the horns. The moose is glowing. And you're like, the problem with the leaping attack, as you're coming to realize, is that once you're in the leaping attack, you are committed. And you're also, if, you, if, the, if the enemy has any math whatsoever, predictable. Um, gotcha. All right, cool. So, uh, uh, Roddy, what are you doing? Because you, you sense Joe coming in here. You spot Joe coming in here. Um, his angle's off. The moose is lining up some sort of other offensive thing that's going to make things really difficult. What do you what do you do to help and or, you know, what do you do to help? I, I put it another way. How do you screw up this thing's timing? Yeah. Put, well, put it another way. I mean, if because I, I kind of kind of put it in Roddy's wheelhouse here is um, if everything goes the way things are going right now, the timing is such that Joe will never reach this thing before the thing does what it, what it wants to do. Um, so there, maybe that helps. So almost like a like a you giving Joe a boost, not so much interfering with the moose, but giving giving Joe an extra uh, uh, bit of oomph. Okay. 
Um, okay, so we'll spend we'll spend team as as Roddy kind of you know leaps counter to Joe, uh, pushing you up to an uh, team is plus two right or plus one plus two plus one plus one plus one. So I guess it's up to a seven. Why do I think plus two? What's wrong with my head? Um, it's like I haven't played this in a while. Um, okay, so that gets you up to a seven on the directly engage a threat. Um, resist or avoid their blows. Take something from them. Create an opportunity for your allies. Impress, surprise, or frighten the opposition. Yeah. Okay, that. Okay, I'll I will I will buy that. You wanna you wanna get the thing? Okay, so you don't. Your your original goal would have been to land on this thing. Um. Yeah, and, and now Roddy's mass versus your mass is such that, um, what little extra boost he can give you on the timing and thing it, it's half interfering with just this thing like trying to keep track of where where you both are at and that gives you an opportunity to get close enough so you don't you don't land on this thing so much as land in front of this thing but then it's just swing swing and you're basically with both arms just smacking this thing's head snapping it around kind of in one case bouncing it off the ground as you smack it down and then it bounces back up again and then uh You know, doing that that Hulk versus the Chitari in the Avengers thing, like where he roar, like the Chitari roar, and he roars back at all of them. Um, but yeah, right in this thing's face, uh, the uncharitable would say monster to monster, but silly them. I don't want to lean too much into the transform thing, so this is just mostly Joe's inner monologue that nobody else really. Everybody else is looking at it as like you look freaking cool, man, and Joe's like. A beast I am, lest the beast I become. You know, whatever. Um, and everyone's like, okay, dude. Uh, so yeah, land, smash, smash, roar. And you see in this thing's face the registry of threat. Threat that can end me. Threat that can harm me. Threat that, that uh, truly... Is, is you know is is an is an overwhelming threat to which I'm to to which I must respond in uh with 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 every possible option at my disposal um kiln would tell you this is a bad thing when it when it identifies this kind of thing and it lets off basically that that circular blast out thing i say the moose is glowing like it lets out the whole like you know the 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 aoe wipe out everybody close at hand uh uh thing uh for this we're you i'm gonna have roddy and joe both make a take a powerful blow please Since you're both paying in team, and since neither one of us are, since we're not resisting or avoiding their blows, and since you freaked it out, I think we'll go straight to take a buffer blow. Ooh, poor Joe. Why is that? <laughs> well, I don't think it, I mean, take it as a minus one, I think. Wouldn't that make sense? I, don't take it as a plus one. I mean, that's I'm not going to penalize you for being on a roll. That's crazy. Um, oh my god! Did you take it as a plus? You didn't take a plus one. Oh, holy moly! Oh my god! You're <laughs> okay. Um, starting with Joe since he's closest to the thing. Um, I'd, I'd love just take you both out and Alex comes sailing in to save the day. I just, just 
randomly. I think that's kind of hilarious. But all right, so land, just enough boost, teamwork together, Roddy and Joe working together, slam, slam, second damage on this thing, roar, right in his face, explosion. You both take tents. Um, youch, Joe. Uh, you must remove yourself from the situation, flee, pass out, etc. Uh, lose control of yourself and, or your powers in a terrible way. Uh, two options from the seven and nine list. I'm sure there's an Avengers movie where there's that kind of like roll, roiling ground zero explosion that you see boiling out from uh, that isn't Black Panther's maneuver. But um, I can't think what it is right now. Doesn't especially matter. Also, Black Panther's isn't appropriately pink. Okay. Okay. To inflict a condition? Or to provoke him to te foolhardy action? No, that that is an actual provoke role, like, thing. Um, yeah. <laughs> I provoke, I provoke Roddy to Roddy. <laughs> Sometimes he may not choose full of reaction, and we can make sure that doesn't happen. <laughs> so lashing out verbally to provoke him to full of reaction. you think I lost you Dave for a second right 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 do something <laughs> uh, and what's your other option You can figure that out. Sure. Shocking. Okay. <laughs> okay. I got that. That's cool. Um, all right. Uh, and Roddy, what are you going to do with your... With your, what are you going to do with your 11? Yeah. You get an 11 and you get an 11 and you get an 11. <laughs> um, okay. I, I'm not going to make, I'm not going to have Joe roll the provoke then since you are, so are you just knocked clean coal, like knocked clean out or, or what's that look like? Is that, is that where you're going with? Cause I'll just blast you back into a tree or something like that and just kind of cold cock you. Well, okay, okay, okay. You think you're talking to Roddy. Um, okay. I would like you to roll the provoke anyway. 
if you wouldn't mind. Because you're... Uh, no. We're going to provoke Alex. Because Alex is about to, like, come into the clear this newly formed clearing as more ruins are blasted down and trees ripped asunder and all this other kind of stuff. And and Joe's, like, half, not even really looking over his shoulders, like, will you get in here and do something? And Alex is, like, literally... Roddy smashes against a tree and, like, rolls and is, like, out, unconscious. Ugh. Um, Bilbo, Battle of Five Armies. And, and, uh, right. And, uh, Alex steps, I don't want to say over him, but into it. And, and this, the rage and the frustration and the, you know, damn it, do something. And Alex already kind of going, oh, crap, what's going on here? I'm going to call uh, S.H.I.E.L.D. And the provoke, quite unintentionally, lands on lands on them, whether or not. So, Joe, you have a seven on the provoke. Um, is this a do what I've asked foolhardy action? Do something. Um, do what I ask and add team to the pool. Or if you don't, which you know could be something as simple as like, well, I'm going to take, I'm, I'm going to assess the situation. I'm going to, I'm going to be cool. I'm going to play it cool like a soldier. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. I'm going to plan it. I'm going to, I'm going to get my points. I'm going to assess things. Um, if you don't uh, take a condition, or if you do, are you going carrot or are you going stick? The way provoke works, I, we have this conversation. Yeah, you you can, and where you rolled, you either, yeah, you either, because you didn't, yes, provoke is, when you get it, when you get a 10, you get both. So if you do it, bonus, and if you don't do it, penalty. When you get a 7 to 9 against a PC, you have to pick which one it is. So I'm either going to reward you or I'm going to punish you if you don't listen. <laughs> all right so all right uh alex i will get everybody into this fight in one session that's amazing i will do it maybe alex finally hi what are you doing you step into this debacle Yes. Um, I'm just, I, I want to... I think with the soldier... I'm thinking about this for a second. I want something... I, I, I'm, I'm down with that broad category. I want something that, that realizing what it is makes Alex very uncomfortable that they have something like this. Or is going to raise the hairs on the back of their neck. Um, I think that Alex already has that feeling. <laughs> okay. 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 So we're going to, we're going to, so we're going to go with orbital cannon. Um, I think, I think probably that's just a, we're going to give you sort of a, <laughs> it's a wizard one one attack. I don't know if you've ever played that, 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 that game, but the way they make all of the attacks work in that game is the wizards don't actually blast each other. They do a thing and the other thing blasts you. So you're, you're attacking, but it's an indirect attack from something else coming from another direction. Um, I think it's probably going to be a, directly engaged not so much because the thing can hurt you but because this is an orbital blast there's a good chance that there's going to be damage taken because it's not precise sure 
Sure. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Um, one of the easiest things, uh, did you just beep because you just rolled or? Oh, sure. Yeah, let me take a look at it real quick. Sorry. Going at the screen here. Um, Savior instead of danger. Uh, misuse. Now you say. <laughs> it's okay. Um, sorry, Kelly just said something really funny. Now you said alternately you can just roll soldier. Is that just another one of your, uh, like a swap in move kind of a deal? Okay. Sure, sure, sure. No, probably not. What I like with Savior, um, and you say like targeting the, the nearest energy signature, I think one of the things that would be really interesting um, is the idea of like, it's not laser spotting, but it's sort of the equivalent of laser spotting. Um, because this thing is, it's an orbital whatever. Uh, you know, you know, orbital cannon is online. Call your target, and you need to call your target. So there's a, there's, a, you could say a largest energy signature, but that could be the temple. Like you don't know. Um, there's a lot of variables there. Alternately, you could run in and basically slap something on this thing and say, "Target my signal," and that, like, yeah. Okay, I mean. Right. I got you. Um, I, I just like that idea for like putting yourself at some risk with, with that anyway. But more than a shield. That is a... Plus four. Oh, my God. Oh, lovely. That's beautiful. All right. So, um, which is funny because this thing was going to run. But, uh, uh, so... Yeah, you slap this thing on, target my signal, target my signal, and you basically dive into the tunnel that this thing had burned down into the temple. Um, shouting the whole time, you're like, Joe, get back, get on Roddy. You're like, you know, something, you know, getting everybody as clear as you can from this thing. Um, you jump into the tunnel, turn around. This black, you see that bright, it's a classic anime thing where you see the bright speck, like suddenly there's a star a day star of, you know, the little ping up in the sky and then the beam comes down. Um, smashes this thing down into the ground. <laughs> uh, apparently my daughter really wanted the moose to make it out of here alive. She's, she's, it, it's not going to happen. Um, the, so the thing smashes this thing down like, I mean, it's it's in that it's in that silhouette in the energy signature type of thing where you start to see the silhouette kind of kind of like thinning out inside of the thing. That's not the disturbing part. The orbital blast is the exact energy signature as the moose blast, like indistinguishable. Which you would never have recognized had you not run into this thing, and you know, like obviously, never recognized. But whatever they just used, however they just used it, same tech. No damn way that that isn't the same tech, as far as Alex is concerned. So that's that's where I'm going to go with the make the soldier uncomfortable with Aegis. Thing. Hopefully that. Oh. <laughs> so. Uh huh. That yeah, there's going to have to be something. I don't say that that has to happen, but definitely that is a risk that needs to be addressed. Um, 
not not least because uh yeah ty ty's homeless now um for all intents and purposes when the when the smoke clears and the blast is done the crater is about 10 feet is the ground is about 10 feet lower than it was um the you know uh aegis does quickly inform you that there aren't there are agents that can be put in route, but there's none. There's no significant force immediately local. Do you need on-site liaisons? They're, they want to make it like they're not going to drop a Huey with with 14 guys in it. Um, but they could prop. They probably got in-country people that can get there to like facilitate and grease the wheels of various things that need to be greased uh stagosaurus that's awesome <laughs> that's so good um i somehow i missed it uh okay so that's so good uh no not standing still very broadly speaking, physically intact in that you could look at the thing and say that was probably a moose shaped thing, but it's been uh, uh, messed up pretty badly. Uh, the ground, so quick taking stock of the situation because the clock is ticking along here. Um, the whole thing where the trees were like, sur like sort of covering up these ruins, uh, that's definitely not a thing anymore. On the upside, there's no more ruins to cover. Um, between the blast from the moose and the orbital strike and the damage that it did earlier, um, everything functional around this space is kind of uh, uh, just messed up. Uh, Met from saving, keeping everybody, like getting everybody like heads out of ass in the beginning and kind of getting them into game plan. You kind of bundle up people from down below. Um Kaelin had gone charging back up there, but Ty is really quite shaken and more so apparently from the damage to the temple. Like every one of these things seems to be kind of like shaking her. Uh, so there's a little bit of need to really kind of help them, her, because she wants to get up there and figure out what the heck is going on. Um... So the interior of the temple is shot. The exterior is blasted. Um, the caldera actually looks like a caldera at this point. Um, Roddy's down. The moose is down. Joe is... Yeah, so he's like... So he's like kind of got him picked up. Um, he looks a little bit the worse for where he's, he's, you know, breathing hard. Definitely his blood is up scorched. He's got little patches that are possibly smoking here and there. Um, not really seem to be paying a lot of attention. Roddy's not like scorched at any point. He got mostly like sort of, I want to say, you know, that concussion, the concussive wave blast that just blew him backwards. It's hard to dodge when you get hit with a wall of air bigger than you are. Um, so it already is. <laughs> that tree rushed at you with a s speed surprising in something so large. Um, anyway, uh, so that's kind of the, the thing. So Aegis, obviously, they're going to get their debrief one way or the other. And they've, you're sure they've got satellite eyes on the location. What they're asking is, do you want... They're not asking if more needs to be done in terms of the orbital strike. They have pretty much assumed or can confirm that that's not a thing anymore. So what they're asking is, do you want local assets to assist or do you want like a big force or are, are you good on your own? How are you? Uh, very dangerous. Uh... Negative, negative. Um, okay, so, which isn't to say that they're not going to have assets on the ground somewhere nearby, but you guys can probably get out of here. So, at least for the moment, 
you have a window here where you can get Tahi away and you can figure out what you want to do about Aegis with regards to all of this. Um, that's going to be a showdown for the next session, I think. Yeah, because th that's definitely going to be a thing we're going to want to see what, what they're doing. Because there, there's a lot. Obviously, they'd be interested in this. And clearly, they have already invested some effort into acquiring some of this ancient stuff. Okay, let me kick up. Suggestions for Tahi? I'm all... Oh my god. <laughs> uh Hellbinder, we have a favor to ask. <laughs> that is Kaylee Kay Kay wants her in her in in their campaign. Um, so how to keep her completely safe? Just move her to another campaign. Just, just consider it. You know, we're right here. <laughs> <laughs> BC. Anyway, all right. Um, oh my God, that's good. Okay, so uh, yeah, a couple of cutscenes, largely uh, uh, panels of without any dialogue, as we showing um, the team kind of retreating from this area. So Tahi um, being helped along, uh, I think by Et, I say by Met and uh, uh, Alex. Um, What a look. What a look you have earned. Um, so, well, yeah, that was, that was in the tunnel. So, yeah, it's fine. Oh, my God. Just mounted as like a single. I, so like one antler always makes me think of the... What? Having only one antler to mount on something always makes me think of like uh, the the original Grinch cartoon where they just took the one antler and tied it on the dog's head. Um, it's just so sad looking. Um, no, that's pretty cool. Uh, yeah, no, definitely souvenir. So like, yeah, kill Matt kind of around uh, Tahi, who's kind of just in really kind of a daze at this point. Um, whole support network. It's connection to a lot of other stuff, uh, violently severed. Um, Joe, some I, I would say maybe if <laughs> Joe maybe a few steps ahead carrying Roddy. Yes. Okay. Uh, and and then you know getting down through the trees. Um, yeah, again, these panels are all basically silent. So we see maybe motion. We can see them talking, but we're not necessarily getting any of that. So they're all basically silent panels as you guys retreat back down to the cliffs. We get the long shot of you guys. We see the 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 uh, uh, Mets um, vehicle. I was going to say sub, but it's more than a sub. So vehicle kind of surface, um, you know, kind of splashing up out of the water. Um coming into shore so you guys can, you know, bundle everybody back up in there and uh yeah. Everybody kind of crawling back up into that and all and a long ride back to a long ride back home in 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 many cases silence. Um either the silence of awkwardness or the silence of uh I was un, I was knocked unconscious by first a blast and then by a tree smacking me in the head um or the silence of, you know, watching your your rival as he's basically helpless there on the cot um, or met pondering 
every implication of all of this um, and a lot of bad all around in, in terms of what this may mean, what it could mean, how it ties into everything else. Kiln, obviously, uh, maybe silent, largely looking at Tahi and what she might mean. Um, Alex, yeah, <laughs> Alex with the switch. So silent in a different way, because I mean, those, I tell you what, the Islanders get really, the villagers get really upset if you don't get back to your island every day and take care of things on Animal Crossing. Like they get really snide. Um, they get very snarky. And one of them's having a birthday, and you don't want to miss that because, like, the potential upsides there are really, really a big deal. And you you feel like you got to remember, you, you, yeah. And and you're like you figure you you the way you got like maybe a day, a day and a half away from getting um getting um the three star rating that you need to get the musician out there and play. So I mean. <laughs> just as you're about to say turnips are selling really well it's like this is it, yeah read the room alex read the room okay all right what did what did what were you just saying about KK oh kk slider right i couldn't i forgot i forgot the musician's name I, yeah i'm a bad animal crossing guy i haven't been on my island in like a month and a half two months something like that so many weeds i'm sure there's so many weeds anyway all right uh, I think this is a good place to stop. So we're going to stop right here. Although we could probably like squeeze another 15 minutes out, but I don't see the point. So, yeah. Okay. So, uh, beginning with Mar, beginning with Matt, uh, let's, 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 oh, did I? All right. I feel like I owe you a, a history roll too. So please. Make me start with the history roll next time. Uh, because it's awkward and on the spot making and it scars a person. Also, it was a month ago. So, yeah, that's a fair point, though, actually. Um, okay. Uh, uh, in that case, you should be ready for this. Uh, Kiln, closer to the team, further away from the team, more in your image yourself. Okay, shift your labels one up, one down, as you see fit. Uh, Roddy, I am fascinated by this potential answer here. So closer to the team, further away from the team, more do an image of yourself. Uh huh. Cool. Yeah, you charged a moose in the tunnel, and then they charged a moose. In the no. Oh, the thing with with the uh, Tahi. Ah, oh. I mean, having Tahi as a faculty member would really that'd be fast. I mean, there'd be one more teacher that didn't like you. That'd be awesome. Um, all right, so yeah, kill him. So uh, either I don't think you have any conditions, so uh, potential there. And uh, if if kill already has influence, then shift some labels. Um. Are you getting there? <laughs> James? <laughs> Kaylee just showed me the text conversation that you and her you and she are having about the ship names for Roddy and, and Joe Young. And you are a bad person. I they, were bad. they are bad. They're the abs there are no good ship names oh God, I'm <laughs> so good <laughs> rojo roey re young 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 olds jotty time ape it's, there's no good there here you go take oh take that away from me i can't I have to take that out of my brain now um, all right, uh, 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 Joe, closer to the team, further away from the team, et cetera, et cetera. 
Okay. Okay. Fair enough. Alex, what do you think? Hmm. Alright. And again, conditions or nice. I feel like I feel like this is is this kind of first advances for most people or are we in our seconds? Yeah. Getting there. How many has Kiln had? Okay, that's fair. And gotcha. All right. And met. I'm gonna say you guys have been leveling fast, le leveling slower because your uh, uh, your goddamn dice are so freaking hot. Sorry, I stepped on you there, Marjorie. Okay. Yeah, that's good. And you're right. I mean, obviously, the other thing is we're doing the advancements like not quite half as often, but that's definitely part of it for sure as well. Sorry, I've stepped on you now like twice on Margie. I'm bad. I'm a terrible person. What do you want to do? Cool. Aww. If so, Roddy would be on your list. If Roddy's not on your list, no, that's not right. Yes, and do you have and you have influence over her? No. Yes, you do. Okay. Okay. So, uh, Matt, you can clear condition or take potential. Huzzah! Sweet. Okay, cool. Next time, we will begin with your horrible vision of the future slash past. And then probably use that to segue into some equally horrible debriefing at Aegis. I promise. We have a guy. Uh, it's interesting. Your move in this in this context is very powerful because I think it's going to it's it's shaping a lot of. Um, sort of the, I think what's most interesting about that particular thing with that particular character is that if you solve it all and go, now I know who everybody is and I can address it and you fix it, everything resets and it starts over again. And that's wild to me because your future has changed and now there's a new threat and that, that's kind of, that's kind of fun. Yeah. Yeah. Slow motion, though. That's the key part. All right. Cool. Hey, I'm pretty happy with that, considering that we are, had to knock a little bit of rust off and remember what the uh, brightly colored math rocks were for. A um, lot of lot of good stuff there. Um, the the moose doubling back was um, my interpretation of Joe's give the enemy an opening, but rather than Rather than have it be landing on Joe, I mean, it's Joe, so it has to land on somebody else because uh, then it hurts more <laughs> if it lands on somebody else. Uh, um, so in any case. All right. In that case, I'm going to uh, – but guys, thank you. That's really good. And honestly, hey, look at this. Not one technical glitch on my side the entire night. Woot! It has been a long damn time since I've been able to say that, which feels pretty good too. So um, last time I tried to record this, I lost it um, in the format. So we don't have 
everything we might want to have uh, there. I did manage to rebuild kind of a really crappy summary of last session, but this one will be back to normal. So we're this is session 15. Cool. Nice. Uh, yeah, I only heard you guys go robotic, and I say you guys like Margie once for about two words right near the beginning of the session. Oh yeah, so that's a that's almost a blue that's Bluetooth attenuation more than anything else, honestly. Oh, and I managed to swap the battery in my Bluetooth headset, so this thing has stayed on wireless the entire time. Uh, I had the headset that I didn't. Like for you, replacing your headset was kind of an upgrade. I already had the one that muted when the head thing went up. So I kind of wanted to like not spend another 150 bucks. Um, and it was, uh, we watched uh, the the world's hardest race. The world's deadliest race? No, the world's, world's, the world's hardest race. And uh, while we were watching an episode of that, um, took the whole thing apart on a footstool and put it all back together again with the new battery in. Toughest. Toughest. World's toughest race. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it, it's, uh, and it actually ended up being sort of a weird upgrade on top of it being a fix because the battery inside was like a one, 1000 megahertz or something like that. And the replacement baby monitor battery was a 1500 or 15,000 or something like that. So it's, it's, it was a 50% increase in battery capacity on top of everything else. So actually a bit of an upgrade. Yay. Huzzah. Anyway. All right. So. I'm going to stop recording. Thank you, guys. So glad to be getting back to this. So good stuff.